I'm going to show you how to make a nifty magazine holder or paper holder using just a cardboard box. And it fits on your shelf oh so nice. This one has magazines in it. Um, actually, these two do. This one is actually holding pattern paper. You can see how nice and sturdy it is and how well it holds pattern paper stacks. And um, it's so easy to make just with a cardboard box. Now, when I go grocery shopping, I go to the warehouse stores about once a month and I get my soy milk and my organic milk in um, these three half gallon containers and they look pretty much like this when I get them and I, w I just take it them away because they're so nice and sturdy and before I had these lovely cube units to store my paper in I kept them in these soy milk boxes I didn't cover them or make them fancy or anything I just used them as is well then I started thinking what if I cut them down and um, made nice magazine holders and pattern paper holders so what you want to do first is cut an angle on your box and then you can use this side as a template to cut the other side so then after I cut that side off I used it as a template actually I cut one and then I lined up on all my other boxes so they would all flow the same way and then you end up with a box like that now I tried one where I covered the whole thing with um, craft paper but it was kind of bulky then I remembered that I have this craft paper tape which would cover up my corners and then I could add panel, uh, panels of pattern paper and that would look really nice. So let's cover our corners with tape. The first edge I'm going to do is I'm going to use a really long piece of gum tape. This is not sticky until I wet it, so I've got a little tray of water here and I'm just going to wet it. I actually use this in my watercolor paint to um, stretch my watercolor paper. And I'm just going to start back here. You'll want your scissors handy for when you need to slip a, uh, slip a corner make it here so you can fold it in as you go we have a little working time with this so um, don't rush I'm gonna rush a little bit because I'm trying to film a video here Here's my, my table my paper on my table you can peel it up and, and put it back down so you get it just right this is not going to be the neatest job in the world because I'm trying to do it quickly. Put it again when you get to the corner. Wrap it around. And you're going to want to just flip it over so that you cover up the raw edge. Take your time and be neat with it. I'm just going to go kind of quickly because I don't want to have a 25 minute video on this. I'd like to keep it to under 10 if all possible. You might have to go in and snip here or there just to relieve a little hole that there might be with the tape. If you're more comfortable using shorter pieces you can do that too. If you don't have gum tape you can use masking tape or duct tape or pattern tape. Whatever kind of tape you got, whatever you feel like using will be just fine. You could even use contact paper to cover the whole thing and that would look nice too. I just don't have any on hand. All right, now we want to do the long edges here. I pre-cut everything just to save a little time. This stuff molds really well. So it's very easy to work with. This is about mm, two inches wide, I think. I got it, um, you can get it from like a, a nail shop, artist supply store, anything like that would have this type of tape. It's called gummed paper tape. You go your UPS store might have it. I use pattern paper because I want it to look a little more pretty. All right. Um, I like to use Yes Paste, or you can use spray adhesive once this is dry. But if this is damp, I'm going to use the Yes. The reason I like this is because it's really thick and it won't wrinkle my paper. And I cut out these little panels, and they're going to go right on like so. I'm going to trim that one down just a little bit. You can eyeball it. I mean, it's not rocket science. There we go. This would be really cute to do, too. If you have kids like me, they get their um, highlights and boys' life and high five magazines, and they're always just lying around the house. You could give them each of their own little magazine rack. They could keep it by their bed. They could tote it around with them if they wanted to, and that would be a place for them to keep their magazine. Um, I'm using a palette knife to spread my paste. An old credit card works great, too, for that. It's so much better than trying to get it around with a brush. The brush just um, can't really handle this stiff paste. 
Alrighty, and I'm just going to lay this down. I basically just took one 12 by 12 paper and cut it on an angle. And you can get two pieces out of one 12 by 12 sheet, but you kind of need to do it twice because you'll get two of the same shape. So you'll, it's good if you're making a bunch of these at once because um, then you can cut it out of two, di two different papers back to back. So then you'll end up with a right and a left, otherwise you'll end up with two rights. So it's good to build these in twos, which works out perfect because I buy a, a box of organic milk at the same time I buy a box of soy milk. That probably made no sense, did it? I'm just nervous being in front of the camera. All right, let's put some tape paste on this baby. Yes, paste can be diluted. Um, it's really just a great paste if you make books or anything like that. The nice thing is you can lift it up. If you make a mistake, you can peel it back up and reposition it. It takes a long time to dry. In fact, if you don't have paper on top, if you had like a gob of it on your table, it'll take quite a while. It'll still be sticky. I believe it's a wheat base paste, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Alright, and a container of it will last you a long time. And you want to be careful, if you do get a container of that, that you um, put a little Vaseline around the, the um, threads of the jar top, or it, you'll glue it shut. It's really a strong paste. Alright, and we got our sides covered. Front and back, just measure, because your box might be a different size than mine, just measure and uh, trim out your paper. I'm using some paper from American Craft that I absolutely love, but the pattern is so bold that I haven't really been able to make cards or scrapbooks with it too much because it just overwhelms everything. But Okay, so we finished covering our box, and now we're going to decorate the front, the part that's going to be showing from our shelf. Uh, first thing you want to do is find out what you want to use to decorate it. I'm going to use some silk flowers. I'm also going to use some book plates that I have cut from Matt Board, and this is how you do that. You simply use your die cut machine. I'm using a big shot because um, that's what I have and also because it seems like a really sturdy machine. I'm going to use this book plate die. I've got three different ones. These are all made by Zip and they work really great cutting out my mat board. And you always want to have the face of your um, surface that you want to show. You want the front side against your die and that will give you a really nice professional look. It is a little bit um, harder to cut through material like mat board. It's a lot thicker, so you really need to hold that machine down good and um, crank it through. I don't know if that would work well on an electronic machine because I don't have an electronic die cutter, but it works out great on these hand propelled ones. And see, so you get a nice little, I'll hold it against there, you get a nice little book plate. And uh, even the insides, you could find things to use. Maybe like back some alphabets or just use them for dimensional page embellishment. All right, I'm going to put that out of the way and put my dust out of the way. And let's go ahead and take apart a silk flower to use. I don't buy the scrapbooking flowers. I go right to the dollar store and I pick out some pretty flowers that I like right out of the um, dollar store flower displays. And they work great and you certainly can't beat the price. All right, I'm putting just a little decorative brad in there. I'm going to use this metal punch. It's just like, it's like a paper piercer, except it's extremely heavy duty. I'm going to poke a couple holes in there side by side to give room for my prongs of my brad. I'll stick that right through like that, and then just open up the prongs on the inside of the box. You want to push them down nice and flat so that it doesn't catch your paper or your magazines that you're going to be storing. All right, we need to throw another flower or two in there. Probably should have pulled these apart first. Save a little time, but it doesn't take too long to do that. All right, you can always, you know, layer as many flowers as you like. You use a little copper one. Again, poke a couple holes side by side. Try not to poke yourself. Doesn't feel very good. Don't ask me how I know that. Just poke it right through there. All right, see? And as far as book plate goes, I'm just going to poke out the little brad holes here. And I'm going to line it up on my box. Now, all you need to do is cut a piece of paper that size to fit the book plate when you're ready to label your box. 
couple little holes side by side. You could glue these down, but they just look a little nicer with the brads. I think I'll use another copper one since that's what I used on the flower. Alright, and you are ready to put some magazines or scrapbook paper to store in your brand new decorated box. Let's see how easy it is to fill it with some paper. Here I got several stacks of paper I'm putting in here. Look how easy. Look how nice I prep it. 